Dermatologists use a number of methods to spot skin cancer, but a new study suggests simply asking a patient about a lesion's itchiness or pain may be another way to go. I'm Rochelle Grossman with your latest health news. New research indicates that pain and itch are often associated with skin cancer. This particular study examined 268 patients. About 37% of their skin cancer spots were itchy and about 28% were painful. However, for the deadliest form of skin cancer, melanoma, the itchiness and pain is less likely to be prevalent. If you have concerns, do consult a dermatologist about reducing your risk of skin cancer. Women who have pregnancy complications may feel relieved when a healthy delivery is in the past, but if you had high blood pressure during pregnancy, you may want to let your post-pregnancy physician know. I'm Jennifer Dodd, and this is a Daily Rx Minute. A recent study found that women who had pregnancy complications related to high blood pressure were more likely to have risk factors related to heart disease and diabetes a few years after giving birth than women who didn't have high blood pressure during pregnancy. Tell your primary care doctor if you had preeclampsia. For Daily Rx TV, I'm Jennifer Dodd. Although children have been eating more fruit in recent years, they still may not be eating enough fruits and vegetables overall. I'm Erin White with your latest health news. The CDC recently released guidelines for fruit and vegetable consumption per age group and tracked average intake. Based on the newest data, most children needed to increase both fruit and vegetable consumption to meet the guidelines. The researchers wrote that eating more fruits and vegetables as needed nutrients reduces risk of death and illness and helps manage body weight. Incorporate fruits and veggies into a healthy diet.
A stroke is an event that occurs when blood flow to the brain is stopped or interrupted. Decreases in blood flow to the brain can cause symptoms including sudden numbness, confusion, difficulty with seeing and speaking, and abrupt severe headaches. There are two general types of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic strokes are caused by blood clots that may block blood vessels in the brain. Hemorrhagic strokes are caused by broken blood vessels in the brain that result in bleeding and loss of blood supply. Patients at risk for strokes include those that have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes. Alcohol abuse, illegal drug use, and cigarette smoking have also been linked to significant increases in stroke risk. Strokes are serious medical emergencies and can often be difficult to treat. Some strokes require blood thinners and other medications to prevent future blood clots. Others may require surgery or significant prolonged care. Post-stroke rehab is often needed to help patients overcome disabilities that result from stroke damage. The best way to deal with strokes is to prevent them from recurring at all. Eat a healthy, balanced diet, monitor your cholesterol carefully, and get plenty of appropriate exercise. As the popularity of youth ice hockey has grown in recent years, the injuries associated with it have grown as well. I'm Erin White with your latest health news. The American Academy of Pediatrics wrote that one of the most important ways to reduce injury risk was to expand programs to prevent body checking in the sport. Body checking is deliberately obstructing an opponent by putting one's body in their way. Dr. Michael Ishitani, a pediatric surgeon at the Mayo Clinic Children's Center, says due to the fast, hard-hitting nature of the game, people often ask what kinds of injuries might happen to my children. The most common type of injuries were fractures, which, occur, which may require splinting, casting, or an even operation to treat. The next most common type of injury was traumatic brain injuries, or more commonly known as concussions. Speak with your child's coach about safety rules in their sport. A new study shows some new results when it comes to linking cancer and sleep apnea. I'm Rochelle Grossman with your latest health news. Previous research has suggested that the low levels of blood oxygen associated with sleep apnea could prompt cancer development. But a Canadian team studying more than 10,000 sleep apnea patients suggests that may not be the case. Sleep apnea occurs when an individual stops breathing for short periods of time while sleeping. Researchers say they could not confirm the previous hypothesis that obstructive sleep apnea is a cause of overall cancer development. Speak to a sleep specialist if you have trouble breathing at night. By translating health information into a consistent, easy to understand language, the Daily Rex News Network enables you to take control of your health. Sign up for the Daily Rex newsletter to receive the latest health news and videos right to your inbox every morning. For trusted, research based health news, join us at dailyrex.com. Your health starts here.
Many people now live into their 80s and beyond, and part of aging and living well means being able to get around. Orthopedic surgery to help patients who are 80 and older get around hasn't always been considered a safe option, but that may change. I'm Valerie Cavett with your latest health news. More people 80 and older are undergoing orthopedic procedures and recovering well, a new study shows. Although any surgical or medical intervention becomes more risky with advancing age, the morbidity and mortality associated with the described procedures are well worth the risk when weighed against the variable of mobility. The doctor noted, when we lose mobility, our muscles and skills deteriorate, putting us at a greater risk for various mental and physical ailments, as well as simple falls. They suggest walking and doing yoga to add years of vitality to a person's life. Learn the treatment options for an orthopedic condition. Multiple sclerosis, also known as MS, is a disease that affects the nervous system, especially parts of the brain and spinal cord. Nerve cells in these parts of the body begin to lose their protective myelin sheaths and become damaged. This causes many different negative effects on a patient's health. Early symptoms of MS include eye pain, difficulty seeing, muscle weakness, balance problems, prickling in the faces, arms, and legs, and urinary issues. Caucasian patients, women, and patients between the ages of 25 and 40 appear to be at a particularly high risk for MS. The cause of MS remains unknown and there is no cure. Certain medications are effective at slowing down the progression of MS in some patients. These include many newer drugs including fingolimod, natalizumab, and terflunamide. Physical and occupational therapy may also help patients manage MS symptoms over time. Some patients will eventually need help walking or performing daily activities. Early detection can help with the management of MS. Your physician may need to perform tests including imaging scans to diagnose MS. Here is some good news for Americans waiting for a kidney transplant. Older adults who donated kidneys were not at an increased risk for heart problems, kidney disease, or dying. I'm Miranda Savioli with your latest health news. A newly published study from the University of Pennsylvania found older kidney donors did not have a different survival rate when compared to non-donors. There was no difference in rates of heart and vessel disease between the two groups, nor was there an increased risk for diabetes, low thyroid function, or osteoarthritis for older donors. However, older kidney donors did have a 53% greater chance of being diagnosed for non-melanoma skin cancer. But the study's authors feel this may be because donors might visit their doctors more often. Speak with your doctor if you are considering a kidney donation.
parents want to keep their children safe and healthy. So Dr. Ari Brown reminds her patients that vaccines are important, safe, and effective. The truth is, is that vaccines are very safe and vaccines do their job. And the diseases that they are protecting against are quite real. That's why doctors of the Texas Medical Association started the BYS Immunize program. They've given more than 100,000 free or low-cost shots to Texas children. Vaccines have been one of the most important ways that we've been able to prevent serious illness and death in children. Texas Medical Association, improving the health of all Texans. COPD, otherwise known as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a condition where the airways to the lungs are blocked from performing as well as they should. COPD may only cause mild symptoms at first. COPD symptoms include a cough that produces a lot of mucus, shortness of breath, especially with physical activity, wheezing, and chest tightness. Without proper management, COPD symptoms can become more severe and can even become life-threatening. A large portion of patients with COPD are active or former smokers. Long-term exposure to other lung irritants, such as air pollution, chemical fumes, or dust, may also cause or worsen COPD. There is no cure, but many treatments may help relieve symptoms. Bronchodilators, inhaled and oral steroids, and teotropium are safe and effective medications often used Oxygen therapy, surgery, or even lung transplants are sometimes necessary for certain patients. Patients with COPD or those trying to prevent COPD should avoid smoking or working in settings with poor air quality. A healthy diet, proper exercise, and other healthy lifestyle choices can also help prevent or manage COPD in many patients.